the B movie invites comparisons to other famous literary works, which are not always justified, but have a couple of linkages through the title. One of these is the unbearable lightness of being, the novel which became a movie written by Milan Kundera. There are several mentions of both bees and bears in the bee movie, and Barry by his name is very bearish. His name sounds like a combination of bear and bee, and he, even in his last name, also has many bear connections or some. Bear or Benson can be derived from Benedictus, Latin meaning blessed, or from, according to some sources, Bjorn, a Scandinavian word meaning bear cub or warrior, and from another source, Bene, a word meaning slayer. So there are these warrior associations with it, and Barry very much likes to portray himself as a warrior in one scene, telling his enraptured audience of bees that he beat up a bear and knocked it out after it had been smacking him around. And this is part of his preparation for getting his dream career and becoming unbearably light in the way in that he wants to fly and make a living flying by gathering honey as a jock, a pollen jock. So he has meanings that have become part of popular culture in that there was a novel called Gentle Ben, with a bear named Ben, and that has become a common feature of bears and that are sold as toys and characters and so on, that they're common, they're often called Ben or Benny. So there is this strange relationship that Barry has with bears. He, in some sense, wants to be one, even as he fights or opposes them. And when Adam and he walk past a newspaper headline, it mentions a berserk bee, a bear going berserk. To go berserk is, to, is based on the idea of wearing the skin of a bear or a wolf. Berserkers were warriors, and the name means bear shirt or bear skin, who wore the skins of animals whose tactics they admired and who they emulated. One of the other possible meanings of Benson or sources of it is from Benjamin, which is the tribe of the Israelites descended from Jacob, who were identified as being like a ravening wolf, wolf being another one of the chosen berserker animals. So this desire to be something much bigger and more dramatic than one is becomes an extension of Barry's character and then works its way into the movie in that the movie becomes unbearably light in the sense alluded to in Kundera's novel in that it's possible to become uncertain as to whether the characters are really even there or not. Barry, when dreaming about his future liaison with Vanessa, who he can't physically have much of a relationship with and wants to circumvent that by any means possible, indulges in a fantasy after spending three days lazing around in or by the pool. After he wins his court case, Barry's vision takes in the whole of his community, so they all start acting like Barry. They, after winning their court case, lie around for three days doing nothing by the pool, exactly as Barry did. Now, if this is a marker saying that whatever happens after the three days of activity is a fantasy that ends when the fantasy with voice music say, singing and playing comes to an end, then all the rest of the movie, after the three days of rest, would, by that criterion, be a fantasy. And we never see anyone gasping for air and coming up and breaking out of the fantasy, except perhaps for 
the boyfriend or would-be boyfriend who says, when will this nightmare end at the end of the movie because that bee is living his life. So there, the whole thing becomes an externalization of the bee's misconceptions about reality. Earlier on, when Barry Gaw was on for his first flight outside the hive, the more experienced pollen jock tries to impart some presumed wisdom in taking pollen from a daisy and sprinkling it on a rose, saying, you know, this is how we do it, this is our, how we work our magic, when it wouldn't work. Uh, pollen from a daisy would not help a, a rose be fertilized. And later on in the movie, when the presumed die-off takes place during the three days of symbolic autumn and winter drying out of everything that would not actually be affected by the absence of bees, there is a spraying of pollen that supposedly brings everything back. So we see an extension on a grand scale of the bees' misconceptions of how pollen works. It's like there's this one universal pollen that pollinates everything. And trees and grass, however, don't depend on bees in the first place, shouldn't have turned brown and barren, and wouldn't be brought back to life by having flower pollen sprinkled on them. So there's a huge, unreal quality to the whole thing. The song is also, rather than just sugar, sugar, a song about endearment, although the second song, Here Comes the Sun, contains references to Little Darling, which is another kind of honey or term of endearment. There's much more to it than that in saying that the song's not merely about the return of the bees, but about the return of the sun, the end of winter, even though it is still apparently at least summer or late summer in the movie. So there's this whole unreality about it, and that is part of something alluded to a little bit in Kinnear's novel, when people have a choice of living a light life outside the Czech Republic, or going back after it, is, it has been cracked down upon by the Soviets, principally led by the Russians, Russia being a country symbolized as the bear. So after the bears have cracked down in, in Kadir's novel, people have to make this choice. And in the movie, it's somewhat open-ended, although has, there has been a, a bear-related crackdown. If you watch my other video on the meaning of smoke 